soil, rich, dark, fertile. You can't grow fruits and vegetables without it. Or can you? With technology, innovation, and a little H2O, hydroponic growers are making it happen. But for farmers accustomed to working in the dirt, it can be a challenging transition. We were traditional farmers before uh, we got into hydroponic production. We had uh, traditional corn and beans, plus we had hogs and cattle. When we went to hydroponic farming, it was a, it was a gamble, it was a different type of marketing before we had always gone to the elevator with our grain and taken the hogs to the livestock yards. Well, now we had to market our own product because you're growing tomatoes, for example, and you can't take them to the local local elevator and drop off 20 cases of tomatoes and said, here, this is my pick for the week. Growing uh, is the fun and easy part of hydroponics. Marketing is probably the most challenging of the whole operation. So why would a traditional farmer cross over to hydroponics? Traditional farming required to, an expansion, we needed more real estate. So to, to do that, you had to find more ground to rent or more ground to buy. It wasn't available in our area. And farming was changing, and we were seeing more specialization and less generalization in agriculture. So we didn't feel that it was a profitable venture at that time to do the expansion. So we decided to take what we had and become more efficient on our own farm. We started out with 3,600 square feet of greenhouse production, and now we are in this facility at 43,000 square feet. Our facility is probably one of the most technologically advanced east of the Mississippi River. And a farmer has to spend a lot of money on a big tractor or a combine while well, we have a lot of money wrapped up in our facility so we can grow indoors and we grow all year round so environmental controls are expensive what some people spend on tractors we're actually spend on a computer system the van scoy farm runs on technology and water much of the water is recycled and reused as it recirculates through the system we use 10% of the amount of water of what you would do to grow an outdoor crop. So that makes this facility a lot more efficient. You'll see when you're walking through the greenhouse, um, a bunch of spaghetti tubes, what we call them emitter tubes, and that's what the watering source is for each individual plant. The water is pumped and mixed with fertilizer, and then the computer control program will actually determine when the plant needs to be watered and then that pump will go ahead and water uh, those plants each individually. We have 10,000 emitters that water this whole facility. Sensors trigger delivery of precise amounts of water and nutrients at exactly the right time. That degree of technical sophistication didn't happen overnight. You know, it took about two years to get a program put together to where we were happy with the results that we had. We can see three and four times the yield per acre in a greenhouse hydroponic facility is what you can in traditional outdoor growing conditions. And this is our Ohio. Here the in 2005, our Ohio television visited the Fanskoy farm. Bill's three sons have grown up, but the facility looks the same. That, however, is deceiving. In the last five years, our business has changed quite dramatically. When we originally built the greenhouse, we were predominantly wholesale. And from that point, consumers were starting to see the need to buy more local and buy more direct based on their personal preference. So we have become more direct marketers. We're selling through farm markets. We're selling through a CSA program that we have of our own. CSA stands for Community Supported Agriculture. CSA is also known as subscription farming. Part of the Van Scoy advantage is that being hydroponic, they can provide fresh local produce in the fall and winter. Not many others can do that, but there are challenges because you're now dealing with, instead of five or six bigger customers, now you're dealing with up to several hundred smaller customers and everybody has their own wants and needs. 
but because we are a small farm operation, we can specialize some of our boxes for our consumers and that's what they like. We're looking at about a 90% retention rate on our CSA subscriptions. Our geographic area that we presently serve is about a 50 mile radius of the farm. And then they also come to the farm and buy direct here. How are you? I'm fine. When we were in wholesale, you never saw the end result. Did the people like the product? So everything been good? Everything's been great. I look forward to You didn't know who your customers were. Oh, good. We're glad that you like them. It is nice to see your end user. You, you can talk to them every You're week. You're all set. So we'll see you next Friday. All right. I'll see you next Friday. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. I guess that's Take what's care. probably makes us the, the most proud is that people like what we're producing. Bill's three sons, with their impressive collection of FFA awards, share their father's interest in hydroponics. Probably all three sons are, want to be involved in agriculture, and that's part of my purpose, is to help make that happen for them. Which means there's likely to be a family-owned hydroponic farm in Hardin County for some time to come.